Make sure to hang around for the end of this video because I've got a big surprise that's going to interest you and it's related to this. So I'm back after my long seven month absence. I'm in a new shop. Got some new equipment we'll talk about later. And I've got the Chinese shoe patcher. I'm going to do an in-depth video today on the shoe patcher and run some leather through it. Uh, my last video on this uh, was incredibly popular. A lot of you out there want to know what can I do for a low cost sewing machine. This is it. So what is a Chinese shoe patcher? A Chinese shoe patcher is the common nickname for one of these uh, hand crank sewing machines. A lot of people say it's a, a variation of a Singer machine. It actually isn't. It is a variation, it is a modern counterfeit of a machine called the uh, Bradbury um, sewing machine. I'll put up some uh, pictures of it here in the video, but you can see how the mechanism is very similar. You have a wheel with a cam carved into the back. You spin it, moves everything up and down, engage the walking foot, and now it's walking and it's anything but quiet. Um, this machine has a lot of modifications to it that I have done in order to make it suitable for leather work. So I went ahead and I uh, enameled the arm and the wheel. In addition to that, I went over the whole thing with a fine grit sandpaper and then coated that with a little bit of oil. The other major problem with this machine is the tensioners. The tensioners are not that great. They are pretty much just uh, two plates, a spring, and then a bolt with a cut in the middle of it. Um, you turn the bolt, it presses the spring, and in theory it tightens the machine. So for leather craft, we're kind of uh, modifying them and adapting them. But as you've seen in some of my other videos, and you'll see in this video, it works. And it works well, as long as you're prepared to put up with tinkering with it. So let's go ahead and uh, quit talking and get into it. Alright, so here we have a piece of oil tanned leather, about three ounces. We're going to stitch it. Let's give you an idea of what this machine does. Alright, so you see right there, that's a pretty decent stitch. Looks like the tension on the top might be a little tight. Go ahead and adjust that. One of the things about this machine is it's not really capable of being fine-tuned. You kind of got to work with it for each project. Um, but for the price, uh, most leather so, uh, stitching machines, an industrial one, they're going to run you about $1,500, anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 for a decent one. Um, a really good one's going to be a lot more, around five. Now you can see it broke the thread. Now there's a couple reasons why it broke the thread. My main one, right here. That tensioner is too tight. So you need to loosen that tensioner. That should be better. So re-thread the machine and then go back and try it again. So we're going to set this here. We're going to do two layers this time. Now say I want to backstitch this. I could simply just spin it around and sew backwards. and a backstitch. As long as you're good, you'll get it in line. But, there's another way to do it. So now you want to backstitch it. When you turn it around and sew backwards, sometimes it's hard to see where you're going, especially if you're inexperienced on a sewing machine. I've been using a sewing machine for about 15 years, so I'm pretty confident with my sewing skills, but there are those out there who are brand new to it. So for that, I would recommend lowering your wheel down here, giving a little bit of tension. See how right there, you kind of bring it up, a little cheat. See that? 
See how right, right there I can raise the presser foot, swing it around, get it in line, and now back stitch. And I'm going into each hole that I just made. And I'm even traveling back through the rest of it. Raise that up. Now when you're pulling a piece out, don't just yank it, you'll break the thread. Up here, pull it loose, and then pull from there. You can see the thread popped out of the tensioner again. So I'm actually going to change the tensioners. This is a very crude machine. It does work, but it's good for it's mainly good for hobbyists and one-off projects. If you're going to do any kind of production work with this, I would recommend getting something different. Now I can't take credit for this modification. I saw people in some forums talking about this. This is pure genius. I wish I could find the forum where I saw this. So you take your foot off. These two screws, your walking foot will come off. You then go to the hardware store and get some of the rubber dip for your hand, for uh, tool handles. So just go into your uh, local hardware store, Home Depot, Lowe's, they all carry it, Ace Hardware. Go in there, ask for a rubber tool handle dip, or a rubber dip. They will take you over and get you a can, probably about six inches tall, and it's filled with a liquid rubber. You'll pull the sealed top off, and whatever you dip in there will become coated in that rubber, and it'll dry in a couple hours. Now, I had to do that a couple times on here to get it right. The main problem is the channel down in here will get filled, so you'll have to wait till it dries, take a uh, hobby knife, and cut out where the needle will be passing through. So the problem I was having with that was when I was sewing my wallets, I'd come up, I'd change uh, levels here. And the walking foot is great for doing that. It'll change, help change the level. With the smooth rubber, rubber bottom, it was having a hard time getting a grip. The rubber is good as long as the leather doesn't change uh, heights. And at that point, it's too much for the rubber and it starts to slide. It doesn't grip. So the solution to that was I got some uh, thousand grit sandpaper. And I put a little piece here and a little piece on the back. And I put that on with uh, just regular contact cement. If you do leather work, you probably have tons of that around. And it has held for a very long time. I've sewn a lot with this machine. And I've never had any problems. It's just enough to grip the leather without uh, scarring the leather. So it works pretty well. Alright, so you're probably wondering this whole video, what's under the sheet? I said it was a machine, and it is a machine. This is my 105 year old white rotary sewing machine. Now normally this machine would not be able to sew through leather, but I have modified it to do leather. It has a motor and a foot pedal. Now this machine did not come like this. This machine was toast. I don't recommend you going out and buying one of these machines right off the bat. If you're interested in a antique sewing machine for your leather work, do some research. I know the Singer 66 can sew uh, heavy leather. I also know the Singer 15 SV can sew some heavy, heavy leather. I think a regular Singer 15 can as well. Each one has its uh, pros and cons. This is the machine that happened to literally just, it just showed up, it just fell into our lap. Um, I, was about to, I was about to sell it. My wife and I, we own an eBay business, we buy and sell a lot of goods. I was getting ready to sell this thing and I started thinking to myself, these old machines are made a lot like this machine. I wonder if it'll go through leather, and it does. Um, a little bit of modification. It was really hard to get it to work at first, but going in, tinkering with it, knowing sewing machines, I was able to get it to work. I don't recommend you go out and get one of these versus getting one of these if you're just looking to do leather work as a hobby. If you're going to do leather work as a hobby, I definitely recommend getting the shoe patcher. You can do a lot of things with it. You've got the cylinder arm. You can spin the foot around to back stitch. This, it doesn't have a back stitch. It only stitches straight which means I have to spin the work around and if my work is too big I'm not going to be able to backstitch it. I'm going to be end, end up having to do it by hand. I hope you've enjoyed my information on the Chinese shoe patcher. 
I've got some uh, tutorials planned. Um, we'll probably be using both machines here in the shop. All right, well, thanks for stopping by today and taking a look at what we got going on. If you have one of these Chinese shoe patchers, or maybe you're just sewing it by hand, or maybe you have a full-on industrial machine, I'd love to see what you're doing. Head over to the Facebook page, and be sure to like, share, and subscribe this video, and share your work on Facebook with us.